The next thing we want to talk about when we're looking at cell structure in this lecture is the idea of cell size. Now that we've established the two categories of cells and what cells really are, we can start going into more detail as to in terms of what cells consist of. And one thing you want to first to make sure you understand is this idea of cell size. One very obvious fact is that cells are mostly small. So most cells are small. Let's just write that down. Make that very clear. Most cells are small. I think most of us know that, but let's figure out why. Why are these cells small? And is it advantageous? Is it good to be so small? So one of the reasons why, or a couple of reasons, include, um, and they fall under this category of limits to cell size. One of the major limits to cell size is the plasma membrane. Because if you think about it, if you take something and you originally have, let's say, let's say you have a plasma membrane just like this, you have now restricted whatever's inside the plasma membrane, let's say there's this random square, before, this random square had the ability to float around all of this gray area that I'm going over. But once I put a membrane around it and I enclose it, I have now limited its ability to move around and I've limited the size at which it can move, the size, the span at which it has to do whatever it wants. So that's a very basic example of what plasma membrane does to the limiting of cell size. But more so, scientifically, we can say that it creates a boundary. And in addition, it also um, is going to create a boundary that makes all substances that all substances have to cross. So what I mean by this is that all substances must cross this boundary in order to enter and in order to exit. There's no longer this ability for remember that square to freely go wherever it wants. That square now has to be, in, is actually enclosed and now has to exit. And it has to exit via a plasma membrane that's blocking its path. So this is a boundary that limits the size of the cell um, pretty greatly. In addition um, to the boundary, we also have to look at the idea that the plasma membrane now only provides a limited amount of space. What I mean by this is that, let's write that down, only a limited amount of space, um, let's say only a little amount of stuff, I'm going to say actually, only a little, a little uh, limited amount of stuff can cross per unit area, can cross per unit area. What does that mean? Basically, if we, once again, draw a basic plasma membrane, now you only have the space that is being circled. This circled space is the only amount of area at which you can figure out a way to leave or enter if you are a substance. If this square is on the outside, it can only enter in this designated area. It cannot go over here, let's say, to this spot and enter. It has to figure out a way to enter through this limited surface area and this limited area at which it can enter is a part of why cell size is limited to cells. So that covers our plasma membrane. One thing we have to do now because our cell size is limited we have to figure out a way to maximize it. So we need to maximize membrane surface area. That's a good way to say maximize the amount of stuff we can bring in and out. Membrane, and I'm just going to write SA for surface area. SA stands for surface area. In relation to volume. So, this statement, need to maximize membrane surface area in relation to volume, is actually going to be a theme of much of biology and physiology. Almost everything that you see from this point forward will be about maximizing surface area to volume ratio. So let's actually talk about that right over here. The surface area to volume ratio is a topic that some students get confused about, but to put it into very simple terms, all you need to know about the surface area to volume ratio is that small cells, which are basically all cells, small cells have 
even though they're small, what they give, what they lose in size, they gain in surface area to volume ratio. Small cells have a high surface area to volume ratio. That's literally all you need to know. This is going to be this high surface area to volume ratio is actually a major goal. It's a big goal of many different systems. Uh, the digestive system devotes its entire time. It's built so that it has a high surface area to volume ratio. These are all things you'll figure out later on as you continue through this course. But one driving point that you need to understand is that this high surface area to volume ratio is seen in cells. Why is it seen in cells? Because this is what allows more substances. Remember that problem we had? That substance had only that small area to figure out how to get in. Allows more substances to cross per unit of volume. There's a lot of fancy terminology here, but the driving point here is that because most cells are small due to their plasma membrane enclosing them, you have to figure out a way to make sure you can get the most stuff in and keep the most stuff in and also get the most stuff out and keep the most stuff out. And how you do that? It's the surface area to volume ratio. Just absolutely know that cells have a high surface area to volume ratio. Why do they have it? Because this is what allows more substances to cross per unit of volume. And that covers our cell size flowchart.